Far Cry New Dawn coming out soon, I thought we'd talk about how to implement player waypoints inside of the Unity game engine. This is a common feature that you'll see in a lot of games, like New Dawn, as well as things like Apex Legends, and will involve us doing work in both Unity's UI system and the game engine itself. So here's an example of what we're going to be building today. You'll see we have a number of different waypoints the player can visit, and as you get closer or further away to them, you're gonna see information get displayed on the screen. To get started, the first thing we're going to need to do is access Unity's standard assets to get a jump start on the project. And we can get there by going to the Asset Store tab or by going to Window, Asset Store. From here, you're going to type in Standard Assets, and you'll see the selection right there. Go ahead and download it if you need to. I already have it downloaded, so I can hit the import button. Once it's finished importing, you're gonna see something like this. Go ahead and hit import. Once imported, we're gonna go ahead and go to sample scenes, then we're gonna go to scenes, and then we're going to select the character first person level, double click, and open it. So from here, we'll be brought to the scene view, and you'll see the example level that we began with, and we've got ourselves our simple player just right here. Now, right now, this level has no objects that we'd like to actually see, but first of all, I want to point out that there's a little menu button, which comes up when you press escape. It's this menu right here. We can go ahead and get rid of that. If you go to the helpers section and go to main menu loader, if I turn this off, when we start the game, we'll no longer have that there. Uh, that'll be useful um, so we don't have to worry about other UI elements cluttering our game. So we first need to have an object that we actually want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the prefabs folder here, and you'll see that currently there's this pickup prefab. And if I bring that into the world, uh, right now all it is is a mesh. And if I go ahead and walk up to this, you'll see nothing going on. It just collides. But in our case, I want to make this an object that we want to uh, know where it is, no matter where, it, where we are in the game. We're going to do this by having a UI element being displayed on the screen to show where this object is. So to do that, we're going to need to create the UI side of things first. So I'm going to go to Game Object, UI, and select canvas and that's going to be the holder of all of our waypoints so I'm just going to go ahead and call this double click and select waypoints and I'm going to click the 2d mode so we get an idea of what the whole UI looks like and then I'm going to double click here to zoom out and we will see that the canvas is in a different kind of space. You'll notice that we zoomed out a lot larger than where we were before. That's because canvases are in what we call screen space, which means that the bottom left of our screen is 0, 0, and the top right of our screen is a variable called screen.width, comma, screen.height. Previously, we've been working in what's called world space, where we can just pick up, move things, and in, this is in terms of what's called unity units, which is uh, really just like one unit per meter. Our waypoints are going to consist of three parts. And the first part is just going to be an empty game object, which we're going to right click, create empty, there it is. And I'm just going to name this object to be waypoint. And this is what we're going to move in order to position our objects to look correctly uh, in the scene. Now we're also going to add a image to this object. And you can do that by right clicking on a UI element and selecting UI and select image. And now this has been made as a child of this waypoint object. We have no sprite assigned to this, so I'm gonna click this button and we'll have a list of a number of images that we can use. I'm gonna help go ahead and use this image here. Now if I move to the game tab, you'll see this is the size that it currently is. Uh, we can resize this element by changing the width and height properties here. I'm gonna go ahead and change them both to 50, height and width to 50. And I'm also gonna rotate this image around so it's a little easier to see. 
Um, and also so it's actually pointing down. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that by taking the rotation and turning it to negative 90. That's pointing downwards. The last part I want to add is I want to add a text object to display, hey, this is how far away we are. I can do this by right clicking here and selecting UI and text. Um, so under here, I'm going to go to the scene tab real quick. I want this to be displayed below this object. So I'm first going to scroll down to the text object here and go to alignment and center it as well as center it below. And then I'm going to change the pose Y value so that it is directly below this object. Uh, it is a little hard to see, so we're going to want to fix that next. We can fix this by making use of another component called the outline component. So I'm going to go to the add component menu here and type in outline. There it is. By default, it's set to be black. I'm going to change it to be white so that we can see it quite clearly. And I also want to make this a little big because right now it's a little hard to see. Um, we can do that by modifying the text size, but you'll notice if you go too large, it's not going to be able to fit inside this whole area. So you can click and drag this if you'd like, or you can just increase the height property to whatever you'd like it to be at. I'm going to change pose Y to be at negative 40, and then I'm going to change the height itself to be 50. Okay, that looks a lot better. And if I maximize the game on play, you'll see, yeah, it looks looks pretty, pretty alright. And no matter where we are, we can read the text pretty easily. So with that in mind, we now want to change this so it's going to display something like how many meters away we are from something, but we can also do this through code. Now once we have one waypoint created, we're going to actually set this through code. We're going to create it dynamically, we're also going to move it dynamically through code. So I'm going to go to my assets folder in the project window, and I'm going to create a new folder which I'm going to call prefabs. And then I'm going to drag and drop the waypoint, single waypoint, into this prefabs folder. You'll see it turns blue, and we don't need this anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So now that it's deleted from here, but still exists in the prefabs, I'm now going to use a script in order to actually create this. So I'm going to return to the assets folder, create a new folder to hold my scripts, which I'm going to call scripts. And then I'm inside here, I'm going to create a new C Sharp script, which I'm going to call Waypoint. We're going to open up Visual Studio, and then we're going to start writing some code. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have some variables that we're going to be working with. And because I know we're going to be working with Unity's UI system, I'm going to go ahead and say using Unity Engine.UI. And I'm going to first create a uh, prefab for the object that we're going to be creating. So I'm going to go ahead and say public uh, rect transform prefab. Because again, all canvas objects are prefab, have all canvas objects have rect transform as a parent instead of the regular transform. I'm also going to hold a reference to the actual one that we've created. So we're going to have a private um, rect transform for the actual waypoint. First thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to spawn this prefab. But with Unity UI objects, we need to actually have the canvas as a parent of the object when we create it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a variable to hold my canvas objects. So I'm going to say canvas is equal to game object dot find and we previously called our object waypoints. So I'm going to use waypoints here, but I want the transform component because the transform component is what takes care of things like parent child relationships. So after I do this, I'm going to instantiate the prefab with canvas set as the parent. And I'm going to want to save a reference to this newly created object. So I'm going to say waypoint is equal to this. And at this point, if we go back to the game, I'm going to go ahead and select our pickup prefab that we have earlier. 
go back into 3D mode so we can see it okay. And I'm gonna add the waypoint component to it. Once I do that, under prefab, I'm gonna drag and drop my waypoint. And you'll see when we start the game, there it is. It shows up as 100 meters like before. And if I minimize here, you'll see that it is a child of the canvas that we created. Our next step is going to be to update the waypoint's position to be the same as our object. And like we mentioned before, game objects are in world space, UI objects are in screen space, but there is a conversions function that goes between one and the other that we can find using the camera. So I'm going to create a variable which will be our screen position, which I'm going to call screen pose, and that's going to be set to camera.main, which gets the object in the scene with the main camera tag on it. And I'm going to use the function world to screen point. And I'm inside here I'm just going to say transform dot position, and this would be the position of the transform component attached to this object, which would be our coin. After we have this, I'm just gonna say waypoint dot uh, position is equal to screen pose. So here you'll see that now this UI element does move accordingly. We want to display the distance between the player and this particular object. That's gonna require us to have two more variables for us to work with. First of all, we need a reference to the player, so I'm going to create a private transform, which I'm going to call player, and we're also going to need a reference to our text object. So I'm going to create a private text, which I'm going to go ahead and call distance text, because that's basically what it is. So first of all, I need to get the player, so I'm going to say player is equal to, and if we go inside here, our player is actually called Rigid Body FPS Controller. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that name, and then inside here, I'm going to use GameObject.Find again and use this name. Uh, afterwards, I need to get the transform component just like we did earlier. Afterwards, I want to set distance text. So I'm going to say distance text is equal to. And that's actually a child of the waypoint object. So I can use waypoint and I could try to find a child in a number of different ways. In my, in my case, I think the get component in children could be useful because there's only one text object. So this will get our distance text object. And so then inside of our update here, I'm going to go ahead and say distance text dot text is equal to and we want to have the distance between the two objects. So I'm going to say vector three dot distance and the first one will be the player's position, player dot position, and then we need our actual position, so transform dot position. And that will give me a float but we want to make it actually be a string. So I'm going to make use of the to string function. And we're also going to add in the word meter. So add that to the end. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And when I hit play, you'll see there we go. So we're updating. And as we get closer, the number gets smaller and then further away. But you'll notice that it's got that dot and then a bunch of decimal places. You can restrict that by actually making use of the to string function here. So for instance, if I make a string of 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0.0 here, this will do the whole number and one decimal place. So if I play the game again, you'll see that it displays only two digits here, 12.5, etc., etc. If you want to get rid of decimals altogether, just remove the point zero. And as we jump in, you'll see that it just displays the whole number. And with that, we've got the basic foundation, but there's one more bug that you might worry about, and it's this. It will sometimes display on this side because Z order or the Z position of objects doesn't matter in screen space. So even though the value is negative when we're facing backwards, it's still gonna display. So we can actually fix this by saying if the Z position is 
uh, less than zero don't display. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use waypoint dot game object dot set active. Remember set active turn things on and off. And I'm going to set it to uh, screen pose dot z is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, if it's in front of the camera, it's going to be true. And if it's less than or equal, it's going to be false. So now if we jump into the game here, you'll see there it is. We've got this and it's no longer displayed on the other side. The last thing you might want to do is have an offset. So instead of being in the center of an object, you want it to be above. That's as simple as just going inside here, creating a vector three and giving it, you know, offset. I'm going to set it equal to new vector three, let's say zero, let's say 1.25. So 1.25 units above where we are currently. And then lastly, all I have to do is say that is instead of converting world to screen point of transform.position, be transform.position plus offset. And so that's going to add a little bit to the y-axis above us. And if I jump in now, when I hit play, you'll see the object is now displayed above. And we can alter this however far we want this to be. And with that, all we have to do for any objects in our game is add a waypoint component. And it'll display there for us. And we can duplicate this as much as we want, move it around, and the code should work completely fine no matter where we are or if we're behind walls or anything. So hopefully this will be useful for you when you're working on your own projects. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial video. Please like this video if you found it useful and let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or if you have any other ideas of game mechanics you'd like to see implemented.